Jet Lawrence lost the moto at Hangtown. Will he be fit enough to win again in Thunder Valley? What happened to Phil Nicoletti's knee? And which star racing Yamaha rider rode with a broken slash bent collarbone last week at Hangtown? Find out in this video. Welcome to the Always Moto YouTube channel brought to you by Lead Moto Australia and TechnicMotorsport.com. Let's talk suspension and TechnicMotorsport.com straight off the bat here. If suspension service setup and tuning is your business, you want to work with quality components that you can trust so that your clients will have zero issues with your work. Technic Motorsport is in Sydney, Australia, and they have been designing their own spring products now for over two decades. Now with a single source of CNC wound springs from the Netherlands that are produced under an ISO 2001 quality control, meaning you know that they're worthwhile. They have over 1500 of these Technic Moto springs in stock that cover late model motocross and off-road bikes so they're available now technic springs are available fast with same day shipping on all orders completed by noon on business days and technic can send these things anywhere shipping nation nationwide and internationally is no problem at all the technicmotorsport.com website is super easy to navigate they have a spring rate calculator to help you make the right purchase they have a currency converter if you're international and it's all just aimed to make your experience with your purchase as smooth as the ride that you're going to get from the Technic Motorsport suspension products. All right, let's get into this here on the YouTube channel for Always Moto. As always, I'm your host, David Hogan, the Australian physiotherapist that knows the injuries in our sport of supercross and motocross. It's round three this weekend at Thunder Valley for the AMA Motocross Pro Nationals. Let's get into the injury list and the fitness updates ahead of this weekend's round. Jet Lawrence is back on track this weekend, but how fit will he be? He took a hit to the leg, the right leg, right thigh, right lower leg with the foot peg as he crashed there at Hangtown. How fit will he be? Nobody's really going to understand how fit Jet is other than Jet. If he does have a cork thigh, usually within 72 hours, those things are recovered, depending on how deep that that impact went for him. So I don't expect the cork thigh aspect to be a problem this weekend. The issue will be around whether that foot peg did actually cut any of the skin and how deep that cut is. Given he was able to ride the second moto without too much hassle, I dare say that isn't a big issue either. So there will be some residual soreness, but once he warms up on Saturday morning, I dare say he's going to be just fine. The press release came out for Club MX Yamaha. Unfortunately for Phil Nicoletti, he has sustained a knee injury that will keep him out for at least the next two rounds of pro motocross. What does that knee injury mean at this stage? We don't know. There's no details around what was actually injured for Phil. Let's speculate for a second. Lots of these older guys don't have ACLs because of many injuries across their careers. If that's the case for Phil, maybe this actually helps him recover. And the injury that he has at present might just be a bone impacting or a bone contusion because of the lack of ACL. And as it slipped forward and banged itself together, that might be the pain and the thing that needs to settle over the next few days. But let's go one step further. If he did have an ACL intact, has he maybe torn it and he needs a week or two to let that thing settle down from swelling, get his range of motion back and rebuild some proprioception, which is the ability to tell where your knee is in space, to then be able to ride again? Or has he got some other things, a meniscal tear, maybe just some minor ligament sprains? There's so much that could go on here. But at this point, what we do know is Phil's not riding this weekend at Thunder Valley and he will likely miss High Point as well. An update from Garrett Marchbanks. He's had the stitches taken out of the webbing of his thumb after his press day crash at Parlour. He is likely to start riding on Monday next week. So looking for Garrett to make a return. Unlikely to be high point, but definitely by round five. Preston Bowes flog on that uh, Bar X Suzuki. Unfortunately, was the unlucky man running out wide and flipping over at the start of uh, the 250 moto there at Hangtown. Unfortunately for Preston, he sustained a thumb fracture. Luckily, it won't require surgery, but he will likely be out for six to eight weeks whilst that recovery and his regain of strength and fitness occurs. We won't likely see him until much later in the series. For Monster Energy Star Racing Yamaha, it's a bit of a mixed bag this week. Some impressive news from Nate Thrasher this week. It turns out that a crash prior to Hangtown left him with a broken collarbone that he was unaware of. He has previously broken that collarbone and had it plated. Now, 
The crash actually caused him to bend the plate, which then left the collarbone in a very awkward position. But he managed to ride through at Hangtown. Now, they've had since had further scans done, and they realized that that plate is an issue that is a big issue for him, and it cannot stay that in that position. They've had to remove that and reinsert a new plate so to correct that. So for Nate Thrasher, that's going to be another four to six weeks that he's out of action and not racing motocross. And further updates from Star Yamaha, Michael Moseman was meant to be with the team. It's been a very weird situation for Michael since he joined Star Racing Yamaha towards the beginning of Supercross. He managed to do one or two Supercross races and then was out injured. He was meant to be fit and healthy as per our source at Star Racing Yamaha for the start of outdoors, but a crash very late before the big first round saw him left with a broken neck. Now, no details on what he's broken, so ideally he's broken just a couple of vertebrae in a position that is not serious. But Michael has had a history of neck injuries. That's what left him out of last year when he crashed out with Troy Lee Designs. Gas Gas team there. Uh, so this is a bit of a serious situation for Michael that he will probably have to have an extended recovery period based on his previous history of neck injuries. Will he be able to return at 100%? Yes, that's likely. When will he be back on bike? That's unclear at this stage, but likely he won't be back racing until next year's season. And Pro Circuit Kawasaki fill-in rider Ty Masterpool mentioned in his press releases this week that he had a, a rib pop out during Moto1, uh, and unfortunately he was able to put that back in for Moto2, but then it had another issue when he hit a square edge that resulted in it popping back out again. Now, a popped rib, now that is where the lower ribs of your rib cage are actually attached to the sternum and the spine via cartilage joints. Now, that cartilage can break and cause the rib to pop in and out. It's an uncomfortable situation. It's not a detrimental situation, but it's just very uncomfortable and awkward, particularly when all of the forces on a bike is going through your chest and through your pelvis. And so that is going to be just an uncomfortable situation. How quickly will it recover? won't be perfect this weekend he might need some strapping on the chest wall to just support that he may need to be put it back in again throughout the weekend but this will be something that he'll deal with over the next sort of four to six weeks in a minor sense it won't slow him down massively but it'll be a very uncomfortable situation Henry Miller, the privateer Honda rider, will be back at Thunder Valley this weekend. He was out of Hangtown due to a crash at Parlour or multiple crashes at Parlour that left him with a sprained ankle Unfortunately for Henry, he had to miss that one round, but he is back on the entry list this weekend for Thunder Valley. Unfortunately, one of the mechanics for Bar X Suzuki went down with an injury. Unfortunately, he was collected by a rider who jumped off the side of the track at practice during Hangtown. Unfortunately for the mechanic, he has sustained two broken legs and a potential ACL injury and will be out of action for quite some time. If you check the social media pages, you'll be able to find a place to go and support him. Check that out. If you're able to support and donate for him, please do so. All right, that's the updates heading to Thunder Valley this weekend for round three. Looking forward to what this race brings. It's always an interesting round. As always with Thunder Valley, there will be a lot of talk about altitude and how riders go about their business to get through the day as best they can to manage their fitness and their lack of oxygen in the air. For some riders, that'll mean that they'll fly in as late as possible to not have any accumulative effect of the altitude and the lack of oxygen. For others, they will be there earlier in the week to try and get their bodies to adjust if they've had issues with it in the past. Overall, this round will test all the riders and their fitness due to that lack of oxygen in the air, and only the very fittest will survive. As always, thanks for watching the Always Moto YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like the video. Thanks to Lee at Moto Australia and Technic Motorsport. We'll catch you next week.